Hello students, welcome to Saran's Biology. I am pretty confident that you are doing well in your preparation for coming examination. So, we were discussing human reproduction chapter 3 from the syllabus of class 12th. Up till now, we have seen structural organization of male reproductive system. So, in today's lecture, we will be discussing about female reproductive system, how it is organized so that we can visualize the various events that takes place during sexual reproduction. So, let us begin our discussion. So, when we talk about female reproductive system, it has got certain architecture. The primary reproductive organ happens to be a pair of ovaries. As in case of male, it is a pair of testes. Then we have got a duct system. Duct system is made up of fallopian tubes, uterus, cervix and vagina. In the flow chart, you can easily find it out that the fallopian tube is further regenerated as fimbriae, infundibulum, ampulla and isthmus. Here you can find out, we will read in details, this portion deals with the fallopian tube. First is the ovary a pair of ovaries and ovaries are not only responsible for production of ovum, but it also acts as an endocrine organ producing hormones. So, this fallopian tube leads to uterus. Uterus is made up of three layers, the perimetrium, the outermost, the muscular layer called as myometrium and the innermost epithelial layer called as endometrium. It leads to cervix which ultimately leads to vagina, the external genitalia connected to the vagina. External genitalia comprises of mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora, clitoris and hymen. Hymen will be discussing about it as we move further and one more thing is added included here out that is mammary gland. Mammary gland is not functionally associated with the process of reproduction, but since it is involved in the child care, hence we read it as a part of female reproductive system. So, you can take a note of this flow chart that will help you to organize the structure of female reproductive system. So, the gross organization of reproductive system is like this. We have got a pair of ovaries, then a pair of oviduct. Uh, uterus, the single one leads to cervix and uh, cervix leading to vagina and followed by external genitalia. Mammary gland as uh, we have already discussed, it is not a part of reproductive system but aids in the child care. So, the diagrammatic perspective, this diagram is important. Uh, you can practice making this diagram. See here out the two ovaries in the pelvic cavity and uh, the fallopian tube starting from uh, the fimbriae, infundibulum, ampulla, isthmus leading to the uterus and uh, which leads through cervix to the vagina and external genitalia. This labeling is also important, right? One more question is being asked generally in the examination, the site of fertilization. So, it happens to be the ampulla stomach junction, but in your NCRT book, it has been mentioned ampulla. So, you must write ampulla itself. The sagittal section, how it looks like when you talk about the female pelvis showing the reproductive system, you see here out, uh, you will find here out the ovaries are located somewhere here. They are held together with some ligaments and fold of peritoneum called as mesovarium. Then you have got the uterus here out, you see here out the organization of uterus just above the urinary bladder, uterus having this passage, cervix that leads to vagina and vagina is uh, guarded by labia minora and labia majora. One thing uh, you must be comparing here with male reproductive system, in case of male reproductive system, the passage for urine 
and passage for semen is common but here you find the urinary bladder also has its opening in the vaginal chamber right so this is how it looks like vaginal orifice is here okay let us talk about the ovaries ovaries uh, female is born with paired ovaries you can find like this here so it happens to be the primary sex organ primary sex organ it has got two function role one production of ovum which is the female gamete and production of hormones female hormones estrogen and progesterone so where is it located located in the lower abdomen the size is 2.4 cm into 1.5 cm into 1 cm so the length happens to be around 2 to 4 cm the width is around 1.5 cm and thickness is of 1 cm these are connected by the ligaments to the pelvic walls and it is held together it is held by the fold of peritoneum which is called as mesovarium right when we we'll take a section of it you can find it is differentiated into four general layers right the outermost germinal epithelium as you can find here out the diagram from ncert germinal epithelium then comes a protective layer tunica albuginea then comes the cortex and the medulla the cortical region you can find easily differentiate as it contains uh, follicles at different developmental stages and medulla is the innermost part which contains blood vessels so here what we can differentiate is the various layers see the germinal epithelium this layer then the protective covering tunica albuginea now this shaded part this is the cortical part right so it contains follicles at various developmental stages a matured follicle is called as graafian follicle we'll have a detailed discussion about graafian follicle but for your convenience you can just look into here graafian follicle is a matured follicle which contains secondary uh, stru some structure like primary oocyte that uh, is ready to form a secondary oocyte a zona pellucida a fluid filled cavity called as antrum and some layer surrounding these oocyte called as granulosa layer and also the theca layer the innermost part is the medullary region as you find it contains arteries and veins so when oocyte is released from this graafian follicle then it is converted into uh, corpus luteum which takes up endocrine role it releases uh, progesterone we'll be discussing about this function when we talk about gametogenesis and menstrual cycle and ultimately it is reduced into size and converted into corpus albicans degenerating follicles after release of oocyte so the section is very very important from the practical perspective also and from theoretical perspective also the sectional diagram is very very important now we talk about the duct system the first duct as we talked is oviduct oviduct can be regenerated into three major parts rather you say four major parts the finger like projection called fimbria in ovary there is a depression through which the nerve and blood vessel enters and also you'll find there is a pore which is called as ostia which releases the ovum when ovum is released the fimbriae containing ciliated epithelium they beat synchronously so that it drives the ovum or oocyte not ovum exactly oocyte in the funnel sepid structure called as infundibulum it leads to ampulla this happens to be the site of fertilization and a narrow connecting canal like structure called as isthmus that joins ampulla to the uterus so commonly they are called as fallopian tube 
and uh, it varies in structure 10 to 12 centimeter in long and extends from ovary to the uterus right so we have already explained uh, the different part the fimbri the infundibulum ampulla and isthmus this is the ovary the uterus when we talk about uterus it is called as the womb of the mother it is where the development of embryo takes place right if you look into it it is connected to the pelvic walls again with the help of ligaments and wall of uterine is made up of three different layers why three different layers it needs to be protective so the outermost layer is perimetrium this one the second layer that follows is the myometrium which is muscular during birth of the child this layer comes very very handy and the endometrium which comprises of epithelial cells right so these endometrial cells uh, grows in thickness and uh, causes implantation so in the menstrual cycle we'll be reading about change in the structure of endometrium it's a cyclic change this is about the uterus the uppermost part the fundus uterine fundic part and uh, the cavity as you find this is the uterine cavity and here is what implantation takes place so this is the space this is the womb that provides place for growth and development of embryo into fetus and fetus to the neonat if we talk about the cervix and vagina and external genitalia this is what we have already seen cervix is the passage from uterus to the vagina right and this passage leads to a muscular organ vagina which helps during copulation so cervix and vagina what is the function of cervix now cervix connects the uterus to the vagina and it constitutes the birth canal birth canal is constituted by cervix vagina and uterus right external genitalia it consists of uh, outermost fatty cushion called as mons pubis which covers uh, the female reproductive organ then we have got a major skin fold called as labia majora then uh, inside it there is a minor skin fold called as uh, labia minora and the vaginal opening is partially covered with a membrane called as hymen and you find just at the orifice on the upper side there is a structure called as clitoris it lies at the junction of labia minora this is how uh, you can look into it the mons pubis which contain the pubic hair and the external genitalia this whole apparatus makes the vulva clitoris at the junction of uh, labia minora the minor lip this is the minor lip and this is the outer lip which we call as labia majora vaginal orifice and urethral orifice this is what we were discussing in case of female reproductive system the opening for urethra and opening for vagina are separate then we talk about the mammary glands mammary glands are nothing but modified sweat gland these are very important it is as it aids in the care and development of child child the nutritional portion so if you look into it you can find it is made up of cushion of fat all around right beneath the skin there is a cushion of fat as you can see here out adipocytes packed right inside that you'll find there are some lobes these lobes can be visualized here out these lobes are made up of special cells called as alveolus alveolus right these alveolus are the cells that produces milk and they come out together forming mammary duct and mammary duct comes out forming one collective opening structure which is called as lactiferous duct right and lactiferous duct channelizes through nipple which is surrounded by a dark structure called as 
areola and as you know this is the ribs the intercostal muscle here out and a major muscle major breast muscle pectoralis major that is found just beneath the breast so as far as the structure is concerned each breast contains around 15 to 20 mammary lobes with alveoli which secrete milk these alveoli opens into mammary tubules that forms mammary duct and uh, mammary duct together constitutes one swollen region called as ampulla these ampulla further gets together forms lactiferous duct that opens in the nipple region uh, you can better see the representation here out the alveolar cells the milk producing cells so there is an arrangement of the duct forming mammary duct and uh, these mammary duct further forms the ampulla and ampulla further unites to form lactiferous duct that is opening in the nipple right so presence of mammary gland is very very important because mammals are characterized by presence of mammary gland a uh, small recap here out mammals had three infra classes prototheria metatheria and eutheria so in case of prototheria right so this is not present uh, the egg laying mammals so when we talk about mammary gland you can summarize it it has got mammary lobes there are 15 to 20 mammary lobes present the mammary lobes made up of mammary alveolus uh, which is the glandular cell that forms the milk and there is a duct that arises from alveolus it forms mammary duct and mammary duct together makes a sinus which is called as uh, ampulla so it is the lactiferous sinus and which leads to lactiferous duct duct from the gland that unites and forms uh, uh, opening here out at the nipple right and there is a very sensitive region here out areola which is made up of circular muscles and nerve ending so nipple is the point uh, of release of the milk so anatomical advancement and also evolutionary advancement so this was what we had in female reproductive system let us look at some of the questions generally asked from the board examination draw the sectional view of human ovary label the following part the primary follicle secondary follicle graftian follicle and corpus luteum draw the diagrammatic sectional view of human uh, female reproductive system and uh, label the following part where secondary oocyte develop you have to be very careful while answering where secondary oocyte develop which helps in collection of ovum after ovulation where fertilization occur site of fertilization where the implantation of the embryo occur so question may contain certain uh, item that you have to decipher and that will be possible only when you make sure that you go through this video and make a reading of your text take some notes so hope you are very clear with the organization of female reproductive system so we'll meet back again in the next lecture when we talk about menstrual cycle and in the further lectures we'll be talking about gametogenesis and subsequent event till then keep reading in case you have a doubt you can write in the comments or you can mail to the biology for all at gmail.com your doubts will be clarified you can also like and subscribe so that you get notification for the videos that are being made for you. Students, keep ahead of your friend by subscribing the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified if there is a new video coming your way.